Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to talk to an inspiring afterlife guest, Krista McAuliffe. Now, Krista was a teacher who also was one of the astronauts of the Challenger, the Space Shuttle Challenger. Now, I'm going to share with you, I remember being in sixth grade and the announcement that came across the intercom by the principal that the Challenger exploded and that tragically everyone and now I'm seeing the image of it actually I'm seeing it out like on a television so I'm being brought into the emotions and the energy of that experience of that time so for those of you who have moments historic moments where you remember things like that, like where you were when JFK was shot, when you heard the news, or where you were when the Challenger tragedy happened, or where you were during 9-11 and the terrorist attacks. This is one of those moments for me in my childhood. And I can feel it right in my heart, right at the pit of my heart, like just deep in that core, right at like a bullseye into the center. That's clairsentience, you guys, feeling the energy of a situation or circumstance, and it's not easy to do. And we get so overloaded and overwhelmed with that sensing energies, a part of an experience. So, Krista, it's a pleasure to meet you. I feel like she's really into science. I don't, I don't recall if she was a science teacher, but it feels like sciences. There's an elementary school um, not too far away from us that is named after you, McAuliffe Elementary. And so there's an incredible legacy of education and of, of courage and teaching and learning and growth that comes as a result of your, your legacy. So Krista, will you share with us a little bit about what it felt like to you to actually become part of that crew to actually be selected as an astronaut, as like a civilian going into space. Can you talk to us about what it was like to actually feel, if, um, actually be chosen to do that? She says, well, it was, quite, it was quite a process. You had to be very physically fit, physically able. And she says, but the mental stress of it all was, was much more than I anticipated. It was really hard uh, mentally to prepare. And, and everyone thinks that it's a, it is a taxing on your body, your physical body, and it is. And she says, I was a runner. I ran, and, um, and so I was comfortable with that, you know, a, a bit athletic. And so I considered myself fit, but it wasn't, it wasn't a simple uh, mindset of fitness. It was more a, almost like a, and I think she's saying transference a transference of, of power from the mind to the body. It's how people perceive mind over matter. It's sort of like that, but, but it's different. It's much more, it's much more almost a mind bending to actually be in that reality, to have that be your situation where your body is getting training and your mind is getting training to help your body not the other way around the body isn't getting training to help the mind it's the mind is getting the training to help the body and to to break some barriers that are that we're so used to you know things that we just take for granted in our daily lives that are easy when you're in um, zero gravity in space there's not a there's not a ease I mean, it looks, you know, from the pictures and the images and the things that we've seen about astronauts in the movies and on television and all that, there's this perception that it's just, you know, you just float around and everything is just really relaxed and everything is just quiet. And, and while I expected to have some of that during the tests and some of the, the things that we um, practice sessions that we went through, you got to experience some of that and the weightlessness was really cool. It was really cool, she says. 
really cool. The the challenge I had though was the balancing of it, the the coming back into the 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 heaviness of the body was really it was jolting, it was shocking, and it took some time to get used to that. And I was really excited. I wanted to do some experiments and things in in space to really learn about things that you could only even just conceptualize and and really experience it. To experience it was really really exciting. I really was looking forward to that and. And I always thought it would be really cool to do something like this, but I honestly didn't really expect to be chosen. I didn't expect to be the one that was chosen for, for the mission, but um, I'm very pleased that I was. And I do not have any regrets. If, if you're wondering if I, if I knew how it would end, if I would have taken on the role and no, it feels like she had children, you guys. I feel like she had kids. Maybe a boy and a girl. I can't. I can see young people. Unless it's her class. It might be her class. But I'm feeling like you're older. You you didn't work with older kids, but um, or middle school or something. Um, they don't look young. Little. It's not like kindergarten, first, second grade. It's not like that. It's older. Um, so this was something that many of us at least in my generation, witnessed. We saw this, we saw the tragedy. Um, was there an indication that there was um, potential issues or problems? Like, did you have a, a sense of that? Like either intellectually, like everybody knew about it kind of, or was there this sense of impending um, challenge, uh, problems? Or, or also intuitively, did you have any kind of sense about the mission? You know, I don't think we, any of us actually believed it was gonna go off because there had been some problems before, some technical things, and it, the, it looks like it was rescheduled, you guys, a couple of times or something. And so there was a, we didn't really think it would go off without a hitch. And we didn't really expect it to actually happen. So when we actually had the countdown and we actually left the platform, we, there was this moment of, oh, this is really happening. This is really happening. Wow, like a disbelief and an excitement. And you can't hear anything because everything is really loud and, and everything around you is shaking. And there's this incredible push of energy, this burst or like this, she says, this thrust of energy that just pushed us in the, into the sky. And it looks like when you watch it on television, it looks really slow motion, but it's you just feel like everything, every part of your body is just zooming. And yet you're like strapped into this place. And she's showing me almost upside down. Like they must not be like facing this way. They must have been facing some other. It's a weird thing. She's showing me like this kind of that the, the seat is tilted and then it's almost leaning down and then it kind of goes back and up. And I, so I don't know if it shifts and moves so that it doesn't screw up their equilibrium, but she's showing me almost like being kind of suspended in this, really buckled into this seat. And she said, I, I never, she says, this is Krista McAuliffe, okay, so the astronaut of the Space Shuttle Challenger, also a teacher. She's saying that, I never really felt concerned for my safety. I never felt that I was in harm's way or that something bad would happen. I didn't, I never thought that. It didn't enter my, my mind. I mean, they talk about, you go through all these drills and these safety checks and there are teams of engineers and scientists and, and technical people that are so highly skilled that there's not, there's always a chance, <coughs> excuse me, that something could go wrong, but you don't, you, you cannot have that mindset. I, at least I didn't, she's saying, I didn't have that. That wasn't really, there wasn't a fear of my safety. I wasn't, I was more afraid that I wouldn't, I would get sick, <laughs> that I would be the one that would be throwing up or get motion sick or not be able to, I would not feel well in space and that I wouldn't be able to do what I wanted to do there, have the experiments and communicate and share the lessons that I learned. And that's what I really wanted to do was bring back the experience and talk about it and show what I've learned. And I was, I was afraid that I wouldn't feel well and I wouldn't be able to do it. But, you know, because the oxygen and the things affect your mind and your brain capacity. And I was worried about that. 
but I was never worried about my actual safety. So I didn't, to answer your question, no, I didn't have an intuition about it. And I think it's because I didn't allow myself to. I didn't allow myself to think in those terms. It, it didn't feel like something terminal. It felt like an, a once in a lifetime opportunity. And it was, and I don't regret it. I do not regret it for a moment. And you know, there were others in the crew and we all left this earth together and they had families and children and important work to do. Also, it wasn't just me. And so a lot was lost that day. There was a lot of tragedy that day. How do you feel about the kids watching this unfold on television? I mean, that was such a thing. I mean, we, I can't even remember exactly if we actually watched it. I know there was an, um, an announcement that came across the speaker and that, that talked about the, that the Challenger exploded. So, and that everyone was um, presumed dead. And then of course all the news reels after that, all in the evening and the next day and, and things. And how do you feel about that knowing? Do you have any kind of feeling or senses of that for yourself? There's really nothing you can do, nothing that can be done about it. It's, it's history and it's a, it's a natural part of life. It's a natural part of things. This is just a cycle. If you're asking, do I wish that the children could be spared the trauma of watching or if watching and knowing actually what was happening to us, if that was something that fear that would cause problems for the for, for kids and for adults even, for, for our loved ones to, to watch that and know what was happening to us at that point. I think, I feel as though it's, it's surreal. I don't know that the children actually could put the pieces together to understand that they were watching us leave our bodies, leave this earth, literally in our, in our physical bodies. And at the same time, it's something that shouldn't be hidden either. It's a natural type of an experience or a process for people to go through. We all eventually die. And so I don't think it's something you should keep from them. I don't, I don't feel that. And she says, to answer your next question, there was no pain for us. We could tell that something wasn't right because there were some sensors inside and things that were making noise and there were some alerts or indicators. And he showed me a man, a tall man. There's two astronauts that she's showing me. One was really tall and he had hair and darker hair. And the other one didn't have a lot of hair. I don't know if he had a receding hairline or what the deal was, um, but I can see both of them. And they, it's like they knew, they both knew something wasn't right. They could feel it, sense it, or there were sensories. Cause she's saying sensory um, senses that things, it seems like things were, they were alert. These two men were alert to the fact that there was something wrong and nothing could be done to stop it. It was too late to go back or to abort the, it was too late. And it happened, it all happened pretty quickly, she says. And so it was not even a moment to process the fact that this was not right. And then it was over. She says it was over. It wasn't, I, I don't want people to think that we were trapped inside or that we were um, burning or anything like that. It was, an, it was just a whew, and it was done. There was a flash of a, this isn't right. And then it was over, it was over. So if, if I had the choice to die in that way or in some other, I would rather die doing something that was grand, just really full in, all in and 
having the adventure. And that is my spirit. And I know that my husband and my family will totally understand that. My mom and dad would totally get that. And all the kids that I've taught in all my classes, they totally would know that I will, and I know that I will live on. Oh, she's gonna make me feel so emotional. She's sharing that she lives on from her teaching, from those wonderful kids that she had the, she had the pure joy of knowing, of meeting, of having in her classroom, that that's her greatest accomplishments are them. These kids, like, I don't know if she actually has real, has kids herself, but there's all these kids then that she made an impact and that they made an impact on her in her lifetime, her soul. They really influenced her and she feels this incredible honor and that that's her legacy is those kids in the world now. And now they're adults. She says, no, these are adults. And there's a ton of them. And I couldn't feel more proud of that. She says, I couldn't feel more proud of that. I, I've always pursued what I love and I've never backed down from a challenge. And I think it's important to recognize that you, you can't not do something just because you're afraid of what might happen. It's more important for you to have that experience and to really focus on what you can do and what you bring the strengths that you bring to that situation. If you focus on your strengths and the things that you can bring and contribute to that situation, whatever it is, whatever environment you're in, that's where you make an impact. That's where, that's where you really show up. And that's when you are the closest to who you truly are, who you really are. She says, that's when you are the closest to yourself, to your soul. She mentions God and she mentions not being afraid and that crossing over was an instant thing. First you're here and then you're in a different context of reality and it's not, it was not confusing, it was not painful, it was not difficult. What was most difficult, she says, was watching the after effects and the ripples that happened after and the blaming and the pain and the shock and the grief of everyone, of the nation, the world, other astronauts, other space programs. Uh, it really called into question if civilians should be involved and what are the roles and what, uh, questioning not just safety practices or procedures, but it really seemed as though that was a moment, a pivotal moment for the space program that perhaps impacted it long-term that something it couldn't quite recover from and eventually led to its, its, and she says its death or its completion, the program itself. Wow, I didn't realize that was the beginning of the end for the space program. That is so unfortunate. The technologies that have come out of the space program are fantastic, aren't they, you guys? Like, fantastic. It's not just Tang and instant food <laughs> that came out of there. So much technology advancements have occurred because of it. She says, that would be my hope, is that it re is reborn. That the whole concept of space and exploration and understanding different planets and different atmosphere, different, different types of ecosystems and there's just so much that can be learned and we've got to continue to have discoveries and explore explore those those unknown spaces you know those unknown, unknown things I, I hope that it it restarts i hope it does and then she says i think it will she says i think it will i think we'll come back around to that i think I think, I think you, as a, as a country, will come back around to that. Thank you. And she's something like, I feel like she has, there's a girl, I can see a daughter or something. She says something about my daughter. I don't know if she's talking about my daughter or her daughter. Because she just says, our daughters, for our daughters, she says, for the other women that have, that come beyond. She's acknowledging, I think, in part, my role, um, Thank you, Krista, I appreciate that. To inspire the spirit of women so we can be who we're created to be. Empowering women is part of my entire platform of the work that I do to really inspire us and encourage us to be ourselves and 
to explore those, those, uh, those places that we're, we have a great deal of interest in the sciences and our communities, in creativity and art, in politics. So many places we can make such an impact and an influence. I feel that too. I feel that too. Thank you so much. And you have glasses. I didn't realize you had glasses. She says, I don't usually wear them for the pictures. So I don't know if she wore contacts, but she has glasses on right now. I don't know if they're readers or what, but I see, because she's, she's pointing to my glasses. I have glasses too. And so she's pointing to my glasses and I see glasses. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope here at Above Life Channel today with our conversation with Krista McAuliffe in the afterlife, that astronaut, that teacher that went into space and left the Earth with the other crew members of the space shuttle. I think it was Challenger, that feels right. <sighs> just feeling all their energies right now, just in this moment here, just honoring their family and the legacies that they've left behind, all of them, not just Krista, because she really brings in the whole, she just brings them all in. But I hope that we've inspired your spirit, your soul, giving you some hope, encouragement, so that you can be who you are created to be. Remember, this is your life. This is your life right here and right now. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>